Romans 8 and 28. If you have it, say amen. amen. And we know, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of the Son, of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them. Somebody say them. Them be us. Y'all don't hear me here. Then he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also give us all things? How shall he not with him also freely give us all that what God has for us. Uh, Y'all don't hear me. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God who justifieth. Who is he to condemn? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate me? Uh, separate us from the love of Christ. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. As it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principality, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Somebody say, our Lord. My Lord. Well, I want you to focus this morning where it says, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. I want to talk to you this morning and let you know that something good is about to happen to you this morning I read the word I heard the song that God has something for you when you look at this text I want you to know my brothers and sisters in spite of what you're dealing with in spite of the storm that you're in you just got out of a storm back to go in to a storm dealing with some trouble in your life God came by to tell us this morning that something good I know it wasn't just all robbers that said it but the word of God said that all things somebody say all things all things God good all things bad God is the master chemist. He knows how to bring the stuff together. He knows how to put the puzzle together. I'm going too fast. Let me tell you this morning that when I was growing up, we would play little games. We didn't have these video games. We didn't have all this other stuff. We just had little toys and some of y'all may still be messing with these little toys as you get, get older. It's called jigsaw puzzles. And in the jigsaw puzzle, you would see the picture. And then, but you would, you would open up the box and you would see all of these pieces and all of these pieces did not make any sense until you began to put them together. And after a while, when you began to look at the puzzle and, and you would get to a certain piece of the puzzle and seem like that thing didn't fit and somehow you had to go right back into the 
box and you would get another piece. And after a while, it might take three or four hours. It might take three or four days. But after a while of putting it all together, after a while, the picture that you saw on the box comes to fruition. What am I trying to say? I know you're wondering, well, preacher, how's everything going to happen for my good? When I look at this piece, it don't look good. When I look at that piece, that don't fit. But God is the master puzzle maker and he knows how to rub everything for your good. And so my brothers and sisters, something good, man, is going to happen to you and we need this kind of news because seem like when we watch, turn on the TV and we look at Facebook and we look at Twitter and we own the uh, YouTube and all of the different things seem like ain't nothing but negativity. Seem like ain't nothing but haters and seem like ain't nothing but trouble and seem like our nation is messed up. But I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, as far as your life is concerned, if you love the Lord, if you have a relationship with God, I come by the tell. You, there's something good is about to oh, I know you're looking for I know you're looking for Christmas and I know you're looking for Santa Claus and all oh, that's good and you look at you know you're hitting and you're telling everybody just what you want but let me tell you it's not about what you're going to have on Christmas it's what about what Christ is going to give to you in your personal life I know you're tired of struggling I know you're tired of failure I know you're trying to take in three steps Forward and two steps back. God is saying, I'm getting ready to work something out just for your good and something good. Woo, uh, if you don't take it, I'm going to take it. Something good. I know your body's racking with pain, but healing is on the way. I know your mind is about to go crazy, but God is giving way to, giving ready to touch your mind. I know you're in despair, but the joy of the Lord is going to be your strength if you realize there's something good. Realize something good. we got to have... Have a spirit of expectation because when we wake up sometime, we wonder where well, I'm going to deal with today. What Negro I'm going to have to keep from cussing out today. What kind of situation? I'm, oh, y'all don't hear me. Can I be real with you? Every now and then you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And you wonder, what am I going to deal with today? I need some hope. I need some strength. I tired of fall. Come on in here. But I want you to know that somebody good. At, oh, good God Almighty. Ain't you tired of that low down Negro that won't do you right? I got come by to tell you, God got the right man for you. God got the right move for you. God, oh y'all don't hear me. God got the right girl for you. Oh y'all don't hear me. God, oh y'all don't want to hear me today. God is saying to you today that I got something good, good, good. You're so conditioned. That to have bad stuff. You're so conditioned to have stuff that ain't right. You're so conditioned to the negativity that even when you hear me say something good, you wonder that can't be for me. Yeah, baby, it's for you because God told me to tell you. God told me to give you a letter. God told me to tell you there's something. G O O D. Come on here. Good is going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I know you filled out the papers and it hadn't happened yet. I know you're dealing with a settlement and it hasn't happened yet. I know you've been trying to get your son out of jail but, and it hasn't happened yet. But God knows how to drop the charges. God knows how to turn it around. God, anybody know what I'm talking about? That when it looks his worst, there's something good. Well, preacher. Sure. You gotta show me. Well, and let me show you from the scriptures. The scripture says in verse 29, 28, and we know. And so there are things that happen to, that you have to know. You can't wonder about. 
You got, see, see, our God's credit is good with me. I got some experience. I'm 61 years old. I've experienced God. I got saved when I was 10 years old, backslid, didn't come back in the church since I was 18 years old, but I got some experience with God. Even when I was out there doing my own thing, can I get a witness that God protected me, that God kept me, he kept me alive when the bullets were flying and folks were acting crazy. When I, when I was, I almost, when I was so, come on here, so drunk, I almost ran into, I did run into my, my mama's house. Y'all don't hear me? Get it, no tell it all. That was just one time. <laughs> and I said, Lord, Lord, and I walked in the house, and my brother, who's usually the one that acts the fool, looking at me like, and I don't know why he was at home, because usually he's gone doing worse than me. I said, shh, don't tell mama. <laughs> and I laid down, and that, and that bed started spinning around. And y'all know. I said, Lord, if you get me out of this, come on, somebody. If you just tell, I'll never go back. Can I get a witness in here? Didn't realize I could have ran into somebody. Didn't realize I could have lost my life. Even though I preached the house, and every time I look at the house, I'm reminded how God kept me in spite of me. And I'm standing here today because something good happened to me. I went to the meeting last night, and my soul went light, but something got a hold of me. And good God Almighty, and we act like we ain't never been through nothing. Act like we ain't never. Ooh, I didn't know Reverend. Used to drink, come on in here. Uh, I couldn't hold nothing. Come on, so I'll stop that. Can I get a witness in here? Hey, hey come on, somebody. Hey, Amen. I don't need no reef. All I need is Jesus. If I want to get high, I can get high on the Holy Ghost. This show I got. Come on, somebody. I brought my own liquor. I brought my own praise. I brought my own Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God is able to give you goodness and mercy and something good. Oh, my. Ah, I said I was going to teach today. And we know, we know, we know, we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. God is the master chess that he's working that out. I know you think it's a setback, but he's working it out. I know you're thinking that it's, the, it's, it's a drawback, but he's working it out. I know you think it's all over. Somebody watching by Facebook, but he's working it out. He, he's working that thing because he says, in the way you qualify for this is that you have to do one thing. You got to love the Lord. See, this ain't for everybody. Can I make a disclaimer? This, this promise, this message is not for everybody because everybody and lotty dotty and everybody don't love, oh come on somebody, every, come on, don't love the Lord and you've got to love God and when you love God, you qualify for him to work it out for your good. He's working behind the scenes. Huh, ain't you glad you got some intel? Ain't you glad you got somebody working? Amen. I never will forget. Amen. I was, uh, me and this guy, uh, me and this guy, we getting ready to get married. Getting ready to marry my wife. He's getting ready to marry his wife. We both were working at Walmart. And at Walmart, you can't be married and work there. Somebody got to leave. And so me and him in the same situation, he was somewhat of another persuasion. And, and it just so happened that we not only uh, had to leave, but we also applied for another job at the same place. And he thought because, hmm, I just go ahead and make it clear. He thought because of his skin color, come on. That, and he was going around and saying, Yeah, I, I got this, I got this job. I said, Lord. Uh, amen. You're bigger than skin color. You're bigger than connections. You're bigger than all of that. Yes, I, I, I'm, I'm applying for that job. And because you're my father, I know you're going to give me favor. Don't you know when it came down to it that the person that got the job was me because something good happened to it. me because my father ain't looking at your skin color because I got friends in high places and his name is Jesus. And God alive. Hey, somebody say amen. Hey, amen. I'm testifying about that because he all while someone thought they had it worked out, God had it worked out for me. 
Amen. Because it's not about that. It's about him. And I heard it. The, 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 she said the off, we're the offspring of God. Uh-huh. We're his children. Yeah. How many of y'all have children? And especially right now, they ask some of them, even the grown ones, want you to give them something for Christmas. Yeah. Anyone? <laughs> I mean, you know you love your children, you know you love them grandchildren, and you know what? You're trying to make every, you hear about what they want, you're trying to what? Make it happen. Can I get a witness? I know it costs a whole lot, but I'm going to make it happen. You want that dog? I'm going to make it happen. You want that car? I'm going to try to make it happen because I love you, because you're my child, you're my offspring, and if I, we can be like that about our children, how much more will God be about us? God about blessing you. He got a car for you. He got a house for you. He got a husband for you. He got a job for you. He got a place for you. He got a healing for you. What God has for you is Good God Almighty. He got it. He got it all. He's got it all. I'm trying to get past this one point. For whom he did. For no, because see, something good has all kind of connotations to it. It's not so much what, amen, you're going to get, and that's good, but it's what's happening to you. Well, look at the text. What am I trying to say? Verse 29, for whom he did foreknow, he did also did predestinate to be conformed or to be shaped or to be changed into the image of God. Well, because something good is going to happen to you, one of the reasons why it's something good is going to happen to you, because something good is going to happen to you. What am I trying to say? Have you ever looked at your life and you get disappointed with you? Maybe I'm the only one. Amen. You're like, why did I fall for that? Why did I get weak for that? And, 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 and you're wondering, you know, is it the generational curse? Am I dealing with something that my grandpa is dealing with? Am I, I follow this and run around in my family and I'm dealing with this. But I'm trying to tell you today that God is bigger than a generational curse. God has a generational blessing. And I come by to tell you that something good is going to happen to you. Because when you look at this text, it says that you're going to be conformed. What does a conform mean? He's going to change you into the image of his son. So after a while and by and by, that's the reason why you got to go through the fire that you got to go through. I, when I think about the gold and people trying to get this gold and they put the gold and, 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 they, and they put it against some heat and the guy keeps on shaking the gold. Amen. He shakes the dust off till finally when he looks at it, he sees his image. The reason why you're going through the fire and going through the storm is God is trying to conform you and get you to change and be more like Jesus. A change is getting ready to happen, but you cannot change until you're willing. Are you willing? Are you willing? Will you sub- 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 amen. Amen. Submit. To the power of God. And so what happens here is there's so much to unpack in the scripture. He says, whom he did, did prede- whom he did predestinate, he also called. And whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, he also glorified. But it's dependent on whom he knew. See, he know you. He knew you. He told Jeremiah, I knew you even before you were formed in your mama's belly, I knew you. And I ordained you to be a prophet. And so what happens is, the reason why I know if you're a child of God, there's something good that's going to happen to you and through you is because in this text, he says you're going to be changed. In this text, the scripture says now, and I'm saying a whole lot, now we are the sons of God. But it does not yet appear because I'm not looking like one now. But he says when he shall appear, we shall what be like him for we shall see him as he is. When we get to heaven and we look at Jesus and we see ourselves, he says, I look like it. Well, of course, you're my brother. You look like the father. I look like the father. But in the meantime. The scripture says we got to act like it, walk like it. One scripture says we got to, that's one scripture says, as he is, so are we in this world. What is Jesus like? 
perfect. Oh, I know what that, I know, I know you know, I know that we, because we got to do this by, by, by faith. What does Jesus, he's more than a conqueror? Amen, he's sitting at the right hand. So as he is, so what you got to do is tell the devil, look, amen, you ain't coming at me, you coming at the as is. You coming at Jesus. Can't you see who I am? That's why the devil, he, amen, he's not, amen, intimidated by your last name. He's intimidated by whose name is in your life. And his name is Jesus. And as he is, so are we in this world. So by faith, when I'm dealing with a situation and I speak to that situation, I'm not speaking in my own power, but I'm telling that mountain in the name of Jesus as he is. Don't you see who I am? And who I am, you gotta follow. Okay, oh, they get a witness in here. Don't believe me? The little boy that got the little boy that got kidnapped. Amen. And they got him in the car. Amen. And the little little boy, little black boy, they had him had him in the car and they kidnapped him and, and uh he kept on singing. If you pray for me, I'll pray for you. I need you to survive. Amen. He kept on singing. And the more he sang, his kidnapper got irritated and said, shut up. He kept on singing to the point he said, okay, I'm just going to let you go because I can't stand your singing. What was he saying? I can't stand the woman that's inside of you. And that demon could not handle the presence of God that was in that child because he was praising God. And when you praise God, I'm gonna show up. Showed up in the car. Some of y'all know about that situation. Oh yeah, more. This is the next point. The next part is that because one reason why, two reasons why we know that something good is going to happen. First reason is that he's working it out. Second reason because we have a glorious transformation that we're being changed. Amen. The third reason why I know something good is going to happen to us is because we have a God Amen. that's on our side. We got a God. Well, if you don't believe me, it says right here. Amen. It says, uh, who shall separate us? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Who is he that condemneth? It is he. It is Christ that died, but you rather that is risen again, who even is at the right hand of God making intercession for us. He wants us to be successful. He wants us to be blessed. He, he got this thing so that he, what, this is what he do. He sits at the right hand of the Father. And when we're going through what we're going through, he is saying to the Father, Father, they need your help. Father, they need your strength. Father, they need your angels. Father, they need your favor. Father, do this for my sister. Father, do this for my brother. Father, I need you. I never see a prayer that Jesus prayed that didn't happen because he's interceding for us. If we got him on our side, but if God before you, who can? I mean, really, he, he's, he, who can be against us? And so another, another reason why I know that good things are getting ready to happen, I'm almost through, that he, he, is, he is committed to giving us all things. Verse 31 talks about what shall we see, say, shall say, shall we say to these things, if God be for us, who can be against us? Then he says, let me tell you something, Eber. Deeper, he says, Paul says, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. He didn't, hold, he didn't send no angel. He didn't send, amen, anything. Uh, 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 he didn't, he didn't, what he did, he sent what he loved the most. I never will forget, I worked at FedEx. And when I was at FedEx... I might have told this story here before. I was delivering and I was going down the street. And I heard the Spirit of God say, and at the time I only had one child, which was my son. He was about three or four years old. And I heard the Spirit of God say, would you give your only son for the world? And I just got, I got real. I said, Lord, no. Can I get a witness? No. I mean, that's my only son. I ain't got no other son. This is my well, only son. He, which I, as much as I like the world, as much as I love the world, I don't love the world enough. And while I was saying that, all of a sudden, 
when I, it was a block later, I was making a, a, a delivery to a podiatrist, and I was coming out the, I was coming out the, the, the doctor's office, and I was on Broadway, and you gotta understand, Broadway and 24th Street, there's the uh, 24th and Omogi. I don't know what it is about that intersection. Y'all pray every time y'all go through this. So many things happen in that intersection. And I'm, 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 as soon as I come out of there, I, 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 all of a sudden, I saw this big crash. Boom! And I got, I got, a, I got a, 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 a deal where I could call the police or call anybody. So I'm calling. I'm telling them, this is a bad wreck here on 24th in a muggy. And I kept looking. And I kept looking. And when I kept looking, I recognized the car. As I recognized the car, I recognized it was my babysitter who was with my child. And y'all know Jan. Amen. Jan is, Jan is brown. And, and, and so I drove. I'm just a block away. I drove up there. And I'm scared. And I'm going. I'm looking. And, 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 and Ashton, he's just crying. But he's unhurt. Jan hurt a little bit. And so I was right there when the ambulance came. And when the ambulance came and they put him in the ambulance and they let me know he was going to be okay, I heard the Spirit of God say, my son died so yours wouldn't have to. Can I get a witness in here? <laughs> Hallelujah. God has a way. Can I get a witness of working things out? Can I get one witness in here? Today, and, even, and then I, I wasn't going to talk about this because, but even, even when we, we, we think about Pastor Tony and, and what he went through and all the miracles that God did in him, and even for five years he fought a good fight, and God did so much stuff through him. And I didn't know he had, had problems with a liver, and, and he got some oil from Jerusalem, and, and he anointed himself, and his liver got better. This was in 2017, had kidney problems. I didn't know all of that, and y'all know the story how God did so many miracles in his life and hallelujah how God gave us a whole lot of time and, and when I think about how the scripture says he's working all things for our good well it wasn't for our good that he had to go but it was for his good because where he is is no more pain and no more suffering come on in here can I get a witness right now he wouldn't even come back if he had a check If he had a chance to. And so, what I'm trying to tell you, in the good things and in the bad things, something good is already happening. And he's working it out for your good. Can I get a witness in here? Clap your hands and know that he's working it out. Clap your hands and know he's making a way. Clap your hands and say, yes, I got the victory. You can't stop me because something good is happening to me. Oh, let me close with this. <sighs> when I look at what's going on in this world, sometimes I see what happened with Brittany Griner. And nobody's safe. Unless they're safe in the arms of Jesus. Sometimes we, we get so scared. Somebody watching right now, you don't hardly leave the house because you're afraid if I come out this house, hey man, something bad is going to happen to you. But don't you know that's faith in reverse? Because even when Job went through what he went through, Job said, my greatest fears have come upon me. When you, amen, have a type of fear Amen. It's already, it's, all, it's okay to be aware. It's okay to have a healthy, amen, concern. But when you're afraid, 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 or whatever it is, afraid you're going get, to get, you know, this, and afraid you're going to get that, and afraid that's going to happen to you. Don't you know fear is a spirit? The Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. And fear will draw things to you. And so what you've got to do is you've got to say, yes, I'm concerned about that, but I'm going to trust God. And I'm not going to be afraid. I know he's with me. And I know everything is going to be all right. That's what we had to do to get through COVID-19. Yes, it was scary, but God is greater than COVID-19. Can I get a witness? Stand to your feet, everybody. God is saying to us this morning, something good going to happen to you. 
something good going to happen to you. How do you know, Reverend? I just read the word. The word is true. 